So the number that I use is money corrected milk, that little trademark symbol. I did tra trademark that in the U.S. And uh, so it's just a way to measure performance of cows. And so the units on this is, is kilograms per day. So we're going to convert our milk liters, or liters per day in your case. We're going to conv convert our, our milk performance to a liters per day based on our component values. So first, let's go through and think about how this would impact the herd. So we've got two herds here. Herd A is a low, lower volume. For my country, that's a lower volume, high component. This is a higher volume, low component. So the question is, who would you rather be? You had this choice. Who would you rather be? Who says A? Somebody say C? <laughs> well, there you go. Whoever makes the most money. He's exactly right. So the, the answer is we don't know who makes the most money yet because we don't know what the market is. Right? I have to define the market before I can answer this question. So when I calculate money corrected milk for anybody, I've got a Saudi Arabian model, an Irish model, a UK model, uh, uh, different regions of the US model, all over the place, Italian model. All I need is send me a milk check. And if I have a milk check, I can compute your money corrected milk and be able to compare cow to cow uh, and dairy to dairy. So we'll find out which is better. So this is the, the pricing system that I used that was sent to me. So here was the price of fat, here was the price of protein, and then in this uh, uh, model they had a protein and a fat premium. So in this model, let's just ignore the premium for now. In this model, if this was your dairy and you could figure out a way to get another kilogram of fat on the trailer, how much more money would you make? It's not a trick question. $5.85, right? Pretty simple. So this is straight up kilos of protein, kilos of fat. And so that's kind of where your model stops, right? You only consider the kilos of, of product going out the door. Well, you've also got other parts of your check. So there's quality incentives. Here there's a location adjustment on this one. This volume is based on milk solids, but there's other parts of the milk check. So in my country, these other parts, another part of this can be milk hauling, right? So you, some of you may pay to have your milk hauled which is a cost. So if, if I were to net all these up, these are all volume based. If I were to net all those up and they were a negative, there's a lot of markets around the world that are that way, that the net volume adjustments are all negative, location, quality, bacteria, all that stuff. The net of all that is a negative and it's normally a negative because you've got a big hauling and a big location adjustment based on the value of milk locally. So let's say that was negative one cents per liter. What would you do if you walked in your dairy and your milker was there with a garden hose putting water in your milk tank, what would you do? Assume, assuming you didn't get caught, what should you do? <coughs> Kick them out the back door, right? Because what the market is telling you is we don't want your water. And if you send us water, we're going to dock you for it. And a lot of markets are that way. There's a negative on volume. Your market doesn't appear that way. There's a little bit of positive. If you get a big positive on this volume side, then big black and white cows start looking a little better than little brown cows. So you got to understand your total way your milk is priced in order to evaluate whether one cow is better than the other or one dairy is better than another. So let's go back to our two herds here and we'll go through the U.S. biological transformations and then yours. So there's the fat corrected milk. This one's very popularly used all around the world. It's probably the most popular way that dairymen adjust their milk to say if they're doing better or worse. And so our tank average tells us, well, herd B is much better. Our fat corrected milk tells us that herd B is still a lot better. Our energy corrected milk, which includes the protein too, that says, well, herd uh, B is much better. These two methodologies are simply based on the energy value of milk. It's a scientific calculation just to represent the energy value of milk. So kilograms of milk solids, now we start favoring herd A, right? And you say, well, that's a small difference. And yeah, that is a reasonably small difference. But think about all the formulas back here. Let me go back to here and look at all those. And all those formulas that we can convert milk or the performance of cows in a different way, is there anything in any of these formulas that says anything about the market price of fat or protein? None whatsoever. If in three years, protein skyrocketed to $10, a kilo and fat plummeted to two dollars a kilo none of these would change your model says fat is worth the same as protein and that relationship doesn't change over time and that can work if they both move together and you really can get a lot of changes but if they move apart you really start looking at your cows wrong and if i were to make a bet i'd say that in the future protein is going to gain faster than fat i think most consumers around the world in our product are more interested in the protein than they are the fat 
In my country, you go into any, any health store, or I'm a runner and a biker, so I'm into, into some of that stuff. Every bar, every nutritional bar, every shake, they're all full of what? Whey protein. Our whey protein has great value in our country. So I think as time goes on, our protein is going to be worth more and more. So if we go back to here, we got our energy corrected milk. There's our kilograms of milk solids. And our money corrected milk, in the example I set up purposely, these two cows are identical. And they're identical because the income per gal per day is exactly the same. So money corrected milk is just an index of income per cow per day. So you said it just right. You said whichever one's making more money. And the answer to that is they're exactly the same. These two herds economically in this market are exactly the same. There is no difference. Now you might say, well, gee, there must be a health difference or something. I'd argue there probably isn't. But economically, these two are the same. The only thing we don't know to get the final economic piece would be how much feed they eat. Right? So if, assuming they both had the same amount of feed to produce that milk, they would be exact, exactly identical, no difference whatsoever. All right? So um, I look at this, and there's my statement, milk per cow is an outdated measure of cow performance. My country is fixated on this number, and it doesn't tell us anything about the dairy. We also get fixated on components, which doesn't tell us anything about the dairy. We need to put it all together and get down to our income potential that a cow produces. And the only way to know that is to really understand your milk check. So, if, if you don't understand your milk check, you need to, and you may all well know it very well. In my country, it seems like nobody really understands their milk check. So you ought to be able to start with how many liters of milk you sold and the fat and protein, and with a calculator and a pencil, get down to that final dollar amount, calculate it all the way through, and really make sure that you really understand how you're paid for your milk. Until you understand how you're paid for your milk, you really can't assess good cows and bad cows, and you can't assess dairy performance over time because it's hinged to how you're paid for your milk. So I've seen some milk checks in Australia where there's no components whatsoever. It's solely on liters of milk. And so if these were, if these were the two dairies and I was paid on a market where I didn't get paid for components, it's an obvious no-brainer, right? I'd say herd B is exactly what I want if I get paid with no components whatsoever. All right? So it all depends how you're paid for your milk. All right, so this gets more extreme when we start looking at cows at higher levels of milk. So let's say we got two cows that are uh, very different in milk production. We go down here and you can see that the kilograms of milk solids, again, a little bit further apart. In my example, money correct, the milk is the same. So nothing big. Um, the one thing to think about is that um, fat percent on cows changes a lot throughout lactation. So it is protein. Uh, so this is why it's necessary to test individual cows that when we measure milk on a cow through meters or what have you, if we don't have a fat and a protein with that, we really don't have a good way to tell a good cow from a bad cow because that component piece is so big. This is the typical U.S. Holstein. This is from our uh, um, bull proofs, our USDA uh, Animal Center calculates genetic proofs, and so they've got lots and lots of Holstein data. The typical Holstein cow is like 3.2% fat, in early lactation, and by the end of lactation, she's closer to four and a half. So when we're removing cows from our herd, when we're culling cows, in my country, we're typically culling on the back end of lactation, and we've got higher component cows. If we're not considering those components and seeing how good or bad those cows are, we can make some critical mistakes. Um, and you, you think about the variation uh, within a herd on fat tests. This is one dairy. It's a 4,000 cow dairy, so there's lots of dots. And this show, the, the x-axis is days in milk, 0 to 400. The y-axis is uh, fat percent. Right there is 2% fat. Up there is 5.5% fat. So you can see the variation of cows within a herd. There's a lot of variation, about a 2 to 3 point swing in butter fat from the high cows to the low cows all the way throughout lactation. So, so if we just guess on what fat percent is and assume that a cow is what our average is, we could be signif significantly mistaken. So if we have a 50 liter cow that's just an all-star in early lactation and that 50 liter cow is down here on fat, she's really not that good of a cow. But if we have a 50 liter cow that's up here, we've got a rock star that we need more of her and we want to keep her in our herd. So we've got to consider those components. It's a huge part of the equation. All right. 